So this topic's come up a couple times and I was recently asked again by one of my regular clients that I've done some storage consulting with uh, about resizing iSCSI extents in Windows. Now, I have a whole video that walks you through the entire step-by-step -step process of setting up iSCSI in FreeNAS and uh, how it attaches to Windows. So I'll leave a link to that for the full process. This is a shorter video that assumes you have it connected and you have it working and you go, you know, I want to make it bigger. And because, well, we all want to make it bigger. So let's go over here and we're going to look at the storage settings and how this is set up. So it's all set up with the associated target. I called it Win Resize because this is the setup for this specific demo. I'm running FreeNAS 11.2 U4, but I know U5 is out around the corner, but I don't think there's any changes in the iSCSI for that. So we're going to go to Pools. And to keep it simple, I put SCSI Extents under the SCSI uh, data set just kind of makes it easier but you can do it however you want and it's a zval uh, set to 251.96 gigs now let's go over here in windows and i copied just a few files over there and i got the disk management open and you can see it's 250 uh 249 as presented to the operating system here so you know we got 250 gig partition but let's say it gets full we have our files on it and we need to expand it make it bigger it's not too hard to do but I did learn doing some testing before they made this video. Uh, if you corrupt a partition, Windows sometimes gets really mad and uh, likes to hang thinking about it. So I do recommend doing this with Windows off. So if you're curious what happens with Windows on, Windows hangs a lot because uh, the partition can get corrupted. The way an iSCSI is presented is a logical block device to the operating system you're presenting it to through Linux, through uh, Windows, whichever you're attaching the client machine for the iSCSI and it will get mad if you have it on because you're actually modifying a hard drive when it's on it's a very unexpected condition because most device most operating systems expect the hard drive to be consistent if it's presented as a block device to the operating system so we're going to edit zval we have our current zval at 250 and like i said we do have some files under those 3d printer files you see let's make it a 550 gig we can really type in anything we can even well let's go all out to make it a two terabytes you know this why not make it a lot bigger so now we have a two terabyte partition save now what has just happened is the data that was on there still right where we left it so that should be fine always back up before you do this things can go wrong you could have a typo if you shrink a volume by the way uh you definitely you'll get a prompt in free nasa this will cause data corruption etc cetera, etc cetera. so shrinking no don't do that uh, not a good idea we're going to fire up windows again and now we have our much larger partition but it's not all there and we'll cover that in one second so if we go over here and we go to this pc we can still think it's still the data is still there still those files and everything located in it but it's still only 250 so now we just got to expand it now good news is windows lets you do this you could do this other file managers and things like that but it is available to be done in windows um i think we just need to go to extend volume they do have a shrink option i don't know what would happen if you shrunk it in there but we're going to go ahead and do this select this finish it's going to think done it's now expanded to its full size of two terabytes. And there's the data, still there. Size changed, that's it. It's really pretty simple. It works much the same way in Linux as well. So if you're mounting this through Linux, you do have to go through whichever disk utility of your choice to do an expansion on there. If there's enough requests, maybe I'll do one for Linux, but I don't think as many uh, Linux systems have iSCSI presented to them. They're usually done with other methodologies, but for Windows, why is iSCSI popular? Well, really simple. Um, you often will have a storage server in this case of FreeNAS, and instead of creating a massively big, if you're virtualizing Windows, which is very popular as well, even on the servers, when you uh, want to do sharing and you go, I want all the Windows features, I want all the functionality and permissions and everything, I don't want to try to use a separate NAS, you present that to the VM as iSCSI because it's not a good idea to create some massive partition uh, to manage. Presenting it as iSCSI also makes it very simple. When you swap servers, you could just reattach that iSCSI to another machine uh, because it presents as a log logical block device. And as I stated, it's as simple as 
changing it over. So we move this over to another computer. It's still going to be the same partition. So whenever you have to reset up a Windows machine, it's there. Plus having the iSCSI on the back end with FreeNAS, you get all the cool stuff like the snapshotting and stuff like that. So I, and I've covered that before. So if you have an iSCSI, you have a snapshot of it uh, and something happens to all your data on there, you can just roll back to a previous snapshot. Now, as I said, it's presented and managing it as a block device. Therefore, any of the data can't be seen by FreeNAS. So you don't get that granular uh, restore, but you do get snapshots and that's important because when you're looking at this, and we'll just cover it real quick, just make sure we're clear on this. When you look at it from this spot, it has no idea what's inside of here. It's going, this is a Z-Vol presented as a block device. Uh, so there's not any easy, simple methodology. It doesn't see folders inside of it. It doesn't see the data inside of it. It's just a Z-Vol uh, block device presented via iSCSI. So in case you're wondering, but I have my other video I link to on how to get this all set up configured, but resizing is that simple. Um, you just expand it and well, you don't shrink it. That's going to be bad. We'll try it real quick and see what... I'm curious what will happen. I didn't try this. I know it'll probably make Windows very mad, though. I know when you do some changes while it's live, it gets mad. So let's shut down Windows first, and we'll see what happens when we shrink. Okay, so it won't let you shrink it in here because it says, shrinking is eval is not allowed through the user interface. I guess we could go command line and do it, but uh, you kind of get the idea. And like I said, I, I know Windows gets angry when you uh, try to m manipulate a block device while it's on there, it seemed to cause Windows to pause. And depending on what is all going on, it may or may not cause data corruption. All right, that's it. Like I said, I'll leave a link to the whole how to get set up with iSCSI, but it's that simple to uh, expand an iSCSI volume and it works fine in Windows. It's just a few steps. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.